Hi, welcome to Atinaja Consulting. I'm Laurent Timmermans, and uh, I'm back with, uh, with a series 2019 on how to open and maintain your company in Hong Kong. So this series of video will consist of five videos that will cover how to incorporate your company in Hong Kong, how to open an account, uh, legal maintenance, accounting audit and tax, and finally we'll be discussing a really hot topic that I mentioned in the past, which is offshore tax exemption. So hopefully by the end of these five videos of this entire series, you'll be able to have a better understanding about uh, how to open and maintain your company in Hong Kong and take a decision whether it's something that is valuable for you or not. So I hope you enjoyed these five videos. And if you have any question, as always, don't hesitate to send us a, an email if you need more information about Hong Kong, if you need to ha some help to open the company or to maintain it in Hong Kong. Okay, so see you soon and enjoy this video. In this series, we'll cover how to open and maintain a limited company in Hong Kong. Now, be careful because this will be a series of five videos, so we spread it to make sure that people can just find the topic that they're interested in. Obviously, if you want to watch the entire series, uh, it's a smart thing to do. So this is an update on, on old, older uh, presentation I have made before. Uh, but this one is an update 2019, so you will have really uh, fresh information here because a few things has changed. So the first thing is uh, how to incorporate the company in Hong Kong, what it takes. So this will be the first video. The second will be about opening the bank account in Hong Kong. Then we'll be talking about maintenance of your company in Hong Kong. And we will also discuss the question of accounting audit and tax in Hong Kong. Now, one of the, the topic that always comes back with Hong Kong is the offshore tax exemption. I have made videos in the past on that, talking about the different myth. Uh, here we'll go a little bit more into um, the, the details about the offshore tax exemption so that if you're interested by the 0% tax, uh, which is not, by the way, so uh, we will be discussing that in the fifth video. So to start with, uh, company setup. What are the requirements to open a company in Hong Kong? So you will need a shareholder. The shareholder is the owner of the company. And uh, he doesn't have to be a Hong Kong resident. So you can be from anywhere around the world. There is no problem about that. We need one director. The director can be the same person as the shareholder. And again, it doesn't have to be a Hong Kong resident. Another thing also there is that one of those, the shareholder or the director, or both needs to be a natural person. So you cannot have a company being both shareholder and director. So one of those should be uh, a natural person made of flesh and bones. Then you need one Hong Kong dollars of share capital. Now, uh, nobody, I mean, nobody, yeah, some people do it, but few people actually open the company with just one Hong Kong dollars of share capital. Most of the time, we use 10,000 shares of $1 each, which means 10,000 Hong Kong dollars share capital. The reason for that comes from the past where, uh, in the past, when you open a, a bank account, the, the bank was asking for a 10,000 Hong Kong dollars deposit. And uh, we get used to actually uh, do 10,000 shares of $1. And now banks became more difficult, but, you know, the practice remained. Uh, obviously, for the share capital also, if you need more, you can put more. For example, if you do trading and you need to uh, provide some guarantee to your suppliers or clients, then if you want, you can have a million dollar share capital. But be careful that your company is limited to the initial capital you are putting into, into the business. So if you say that this share capital is $1 million, you don't have to free it when you when you um, free or pay up when you open the company, but that means you are personally liable as a shareholder to this uh, this share capital. So uh, let's say one million. So be careful with that. Some people put really big amount, but that means you are liable to this amount. You know, if you put one dollar, you are just liable to one dollar. If your business doesn't work, even you have uh, even if the business has uh, two million dollars in debt. If you didn't mismanage the company and you don't get sued, etc., then you won't uh, you won't have to pay anything else. You just go bankrupt. Okay, so just be careful about that. So the things that already appear there is that you need a registered address in Hong Kong. So you need a, an official address for you to receive all your official documents from the government, also the banks, etc. So we provide that. For example, most of the time, your company secretary is also providing the registered address. Even if you have your own business address, it's still a good idea to keep a registered address. Um, because then your company secretary, which generally is also your accountant, can treat the information faster for you. So it's, um, it's, it's a good thing and you don't miss anything. 
Oh, I talk about the company secretary, so here we are. It's also uh, something mandatory is to have a company secretary. Since last year, this person uh, has a license. And this license, basically, it's, um, it's a license that they put in place for us, company secretary, to, to, um, to participate to the effort for the, the fight against money laundering and terrorism financing, etc. So now we have a license to be a company secretary. A company secretary is not the admin of your company, you know, because in certain languages, secretary actually really means that, you know, it's just a small admin. Here in Hong Kong, the company secretary is a paralegal function that will help you with all your uh, share transfer, uh, change of name, dealing with the, basically with the company registry. It's through the company secretary. You will need to pay the certificate of incorporation. That is 1,720. You also have to pay the business registration. Normally this is 2,250. Two, 2, now this year, 2000 has been waived, uh, but I just put it there because so that you ha if you watch that in 2020, uh, I will most likely update this video, but not in the first few months. So it's possible that the BR is back on. So uh, it's good to know that there is a BR in Hong Kong to be paid 2250. And this is a novelty compared to last year is the SCR. So the significant control register, which started uh, recently actually uh, in 2000 um, it was it was now it's 2019 so in in, uh, in march so uh, the significant the significant control register basically what it is how it works is that uh you you need a uh, we you need, you need to keep a, a register of the the controllers of your company in your registered address you know uh, most of the time it's hold in your registered address with your company secretary and your company secretary act um, as the person in charge of the significant control register. This register is not public. It's only if uh, there is a, an inquiry on you, uh, you know, by request of the police or the government, we have to show who's the controller of the company. But, uh, but it's not public, so people cannot consult it. You know, it's, it's with you, but we have to keep one. Now, when you open your company, you will most likely hear uh, or people will talk about the green box. So what is the green box? Basically, it's a box that is green. Yeah, I know it's nothing too original. And I know I'm saying that each time I record the video, but yeah, basically that's what it is. It's a box and it's green. And uh, inside you will find your statutory book, two robot shops, um, the common seal of your company, the blank share certificate, 10 copies of article of the association, sometimes less. Now, this is really, this is a, a relic of the past uh, because everything is done online nowadays. So you don't really need all these things. The only thing that can be useful sometimes is the rubber chops because, um, for example, with the banks or some contracts, you may be required to use your chops. The, the, common, uh, the common seal, you will most likely never use these. It, it happens sometimes when you want to rent an office in Hong Kong or something like that. Your landlord asks to use the common seal. The article of association, this is mainly for your uh, company secretary, for uh, your auditor will ask one. Uh, so yeah, it's still useful, but you don't need to have it physically in a box. So nowadays what we do, we give the options to the clients to have a NECA box where we we just take the essential and um, it's easier to, to ship and, and keep, you know, than, than the big green box. But if you want the green box, you can also make it, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, maybe one day this thing will disappear because it's really printing paper and for nothing. Uh, it's, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, it's part of the folklore of opening the company in Hong Kong. And so that, you know, you, you are basically buying something quite intangible and the green box kind of make it feel more tangible in a way, but uh, not that useful really. So as I said, this is a series of five videos. We just finished the incorporation of the company. Now check the, the, the next four videos if you're interested. The next one is about the bank account opening. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you should definitely check this video as well. And also don't forget to put a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. And if you have any question, don't hesitate to send us an email at info at And I see you in the next video.